God laughs. He like he put me on the earth to laugh. Jerry was gonna bust you up like Vince was gonna try to. Who was that? Was it the dude that gave you the skateboard? Who was that? <laughs> Cause his name. I can see his face. I yeah. I almost got taken advantage of a number of times in my life. <laughs> I got my, I bust my teeth out on rollerblades. The dude gave me rollerblades yeah, like this old right. white dude that lived in my neighborhood, like up on the hill by himself. He's like a loner. Yeah. And then he saw me and called me over. Was like, you ever skated before? And I was like, no. He's like, I try these on. And then Ryan was like, bro, he was hollering at you. And my little mind, oh wow, nice guy, wants to skate. Yeah, appreciate the skates. Yeah, wants to help me out, get me skates. Busting your teeth saves your booty hole. Yep. Cause if I didn't bust my teeth, I would have kept getting the skates, and then I'd have got. <laughs> <laughs> your whole life could be totally just, different. You know why that is? Because you're handsome. I knew it. Comes he, with it. He always it comes it's, with the territory. It, I tell him, it's my weight I have to carry around yeah, this earth. It's a big burden. You and you and you and Kenny? <sighs> Me and Kenny. Kenny's a good looking dude too. <laughs> Boy, before I even saw him play, I saw the draft ball. I was like, God damn, that's a good looking man. I haven't had your problems though, bro. You got the you got the lead in that. You got the lead there, bro. I was like, see, I, I'm I'm I guess I'm woman pretty. I'm woman handsome, but I'm also man. You got handsome. something up, yeah. You got something up. Man handsome and woman and handsome. And woman handsome. I'm both sides of handsome. So girls and boys want me. <laughs> that has to be difficult. It's you see. You see my black from my eyes? <laughs> I don't sleep at night worried about this. <laughs> Hold up. Limitless. Take a stem and cap in it. I thought they hear the witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling got me up. Uh, on the mission got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stem and cap in it. I thought they hear the witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling got me up. Uh, on the mission got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Welcome to the pivot. You've already gotten yeah. a little bit of uh, of what <laughs> the show is like, man. You yeah. Know, I don't know uh, where your fiance is, but <laughs> working on a call right now. Okay. Outside. Yeah. So <laughs> live about ten away, Kenny. All right. All you gotta do is hit me. Got you. Got you. <laughs> man, welcome to the pivot. We're excited to have you. you know, it's just always a cool opportunity. Not only sit with young players in the league, but people who have already had the experiences you have had, and to be a starting quarterback of what I feel is the most prestigious organization in football. It's such a heavy weight to carry. You did it in such a graceful way this year. So congratulations to you. This is Freddie T. That's Channing. I'm RC. Man, pop me a happy dad first before we even start. Oh, yeah. You training, huh? I'm training. Yeah, he oh, can't help yeah. well, yeah. I'll drink yours. Yeah, well, yeah. and you know, too, I had to walk here because they, they <laughs> dropped me across in. the street. Kenny was outside looking for me, and I was in the wrong spot. Cheers. You know what I mean? We'll start it up. I don't want to shit. We'll start it up, right? Look at you. You always do that every single time. There Cheers. you go. Get right. Yeah. Get when right. When the yeah. fat quarterback throw me a pass, that's what happens. <laughs> but, man, let's get, let's get right into it. Also, shout out to DraftKings, all of our supporters, everyone who's been rocking with us since the start. We appreciate y'all. How does... A freshman who was 5'6", 140 pounds, at Ocean Township High School. There it is. When, and I want to say this right, when the Phil Villa Piano Award. Now, I got to brief them and brief the world on what this award is. Your school decided that they were going to make an award that they weren't going to give out every year. So you couldn't just be a good player. You had to be good at your school, good at high school, you had to be headed to college, but also somebody at that school had to look at you and say, you know what, this dude can make it to the pros, right? Because Phil played for the Raiders, was a four-time pro bowler in the 70s. How did you go from that young, small kid to now being Kenny Pickett, the starting quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers? Yeah, man, I think I had that, like, work ethic early on that, you know, we were talking about, you know, you hit, I hit that growth spurt, and then I added the weights to it, and I was always the smallest kid, so, like, I was, I was always getting, like, you know, right above the cut line for, like, the Elite 11 stuff and, like, the rival stuff, so I always had a little bit of an edge to me. I think I kept that once the growth spurt came in, in the weight room, and, um, you know, just that, that edge, I think, has taken me a long way, and it's something that I, I've kept, and, you know, I haven't changed that. Um, something I'll keep throughout my career. It's just kind of a part of me just coming from that, you know, underdog type story. Um, so I think having that mindset throughout, you know, early on in my career has helped me get to this point. There's a story that at 10 years old, because 
you can look at your first year, especially, or even your college career. You didn't hit the you didn't hit school and start balling. You kind of had that Mac Jones, Joe Burrow last year that propelled you into the first round. But your coach in one of the stories written about you says at 10 years old, y'all at some type of camp and people are running. And like Chan, I'm sure it was, I was, Fred, I was always open when I was a kid, but that was actually true. Yeah. I legitimately was always open. And they come back to the huddle, they're telling you that they're open and you tell them, look, I'm going to throw the football to the dude that's going to help us win. And if you're that dude, you're going to get it. What was it about you? Was it your pops, Ken, or your mom, Casey, who also played college soccer? Was it something that they instilled in you that kind of had that leadership from a young age? Yeah, that's a good question. I would say my dad. I think, you know, he played ball at, at Shippensburg. D2 school was All-American there. Yeah, you're familiar with it, right? Out, out towards the Penn State way. Um, so he, I had like that defensive mindset growing up. Like I always loved playing linebacker. I played both ways in high school. Um, you know, and he always taught me that like the work ethic, that, that's where I got it from. Um, so I think, you know, just watching, you know, him go about his business when I was young and kind of just like he would, we would always watch TV and he would just say, you know, look at Peyton, look at Tom, like look at how they're interacting with guys on the sideline. Like I just picked it up early and, uh, you know, I just do it my way, not anyone else's way, I think. You know, everyone has their, their own way to lead. And I just want to, you know, kind of, take everybody else's way and kind of mold it into my own. And, and being, like I said, we see you now, as big as you are, you're talking about the growth spurt and how you were an underdog. And that kind of, you know, got me because of the fact that I was going to say, like, looking, looking up at you and reading about you, it seemed like you lived a, a Disney life. <laughs> Like, honestly, it's not like a, and Parents, both yeah, college athletes. Yeah, like, yeah. this boy meets world or something yeah. like that. I had the beaver haircut, so I was like, <laughs> you, you had it like, what was his name, Zach Morris or something like that? Like, it was a perfect thing. Is that true? Like, like you're saying, both parents successful. Successful athletes and successful business people. You're born, your sister, you're, you know, nuclear family, amazing. Like, yeah. you go, you start. Then you become an All-American. Then you become a first-round pick. Like, it seems like your life is a damn movie. Is there any... <laughs> Turmoil early on? <laughs> Bless, man. Grateful. I had some, you know, everyone has their, you know, ups and downs growing up. And, you know, we had a tragedy in our family growing up. Everything's not perfect. But, man, I was, I'm completely blessed and grateful for the way I was raised and uh, the people that I had around me in my life. Coaches, parents, grandparents drive me everywhere. I just lost my grandfather this season. That, that was tough. Um, but like you said, man, just, just grateful. You know, could, couldn't write a better story. Uh, couldn't have came up a better way. Like, just, just real grateful for everything that I've had. And, and uh, Channing's talked about, your, he alluded to your childhood a bit. Ryan talked about, you know, how big you were in stature growing up. And a second ago, you mentioned, you, you mentioned Peyton and Tom. You know, those are two guys that played in the game that you don't necessarily have to say their last name. We, we know right. who they are. Right, right, right. Uh, but going to college in Pittsburgh, I would think you would have led with Big Ben, Ben Big Roethlisberger. Ben. <laughs> so it brings me to the question, um, how much were you a fan of, and it might be rhetorical, but were you a fan of uh, Big Ben growing up? I was, man. So, you know, one of my best friends was a diehard Steelers fan. I was, I was an Eagles guy myself, so McNabb was my guy. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I always watched Ben, man. Like when he had the, the, a, the, the run he had with AB and Le'Veon and stuff, Heath Miller, you watch those games, Martavius Bryant, like yep. th those games, man, that those guys were playing at a different level. So, like, I, and then I was at Pitt and I was able to see it every day, like watching that Pratt. Like, you can, sit on the side after workouts and just watch them and watch the timing, like watch them when the ball comes out before guys breaks, like way before I was doing it, you know, I'm like, you know, shit, I got some work to do, you know, right. with, with my guys to, to get to that level. But like, I saw how it was supposed to be done from Ben, you know, at practice. So um, he was another guy, you know, I was, you know, able to see up close in person, which, which really helped. The first encounter with you and Big Ben, what was that like? So first encounter really was a phone call. So, uh, you know, I had, I had a phone call with him and, you know, he just, you know, congratulated me on, on uh, you know, getting drafted to the Steelers and, you know, what it means to be, you know, a Steelers quarterback. And um, I was able to talk to Terry Bradshaw as well um, on the phone. Just two guys who did it at a really high level who, you know, you know, hopefully I can have half the success that they've had, man, and it'd be a pretty good run. So um, I had two, two great guys to chase, so I'm, I'm excited to get going. You know, it's so crazy. When you are in that building, it's hard to ignore history. And I think what's different about playing at Pitt and being a Steeler is there is no other place, I would think, for a college student or college student athlete where you consistently see the pros. 
right? You watch them practice. You see them go into work. You know, I was in that building for eight years, and, you know, that's where you saw Aaron Donald and you saw Darrell Revis. And you were like, oh, yeah, they got it. Yeah. You know, and so for you, being in that building and then all the uncertainty leading up to the draft, by the way, your hands are at least my size or bigger, right? You know, when, when all of that stuff breaks out and, you know, I'm going to be honest, I'm going back to the film and I'm like, man, if it affects his game, I don't know how. I, w I see that people will look at him and try to critique him and they try to break you down. So going into that draft with all of that uncertainty, what was draft night for you and how did it feel when you finally got that call at 20 from Mike T? Dude, yeah, it was crazy. Um, everyone's like, oh, where, where did, you, did you know? Did you know? I mean, I had no idea. It ranged from 6 to 20 is what the range was. Um, it could have been Carolina, New Orleans, Detroit. Um, Indy was talking about maybe coming back up to get me if they can make a trade or something. Like There, there was plenty of options that I had no clue where I was going. Um, you know, I just kept watching the picks go by, picks go by. I'm sitting next to my dad. We're just kind of looking at each other like, man, who, who knows where this is headed? Um, but we knew the Steelers were at 20. And that was one of my favorite places, obviously. So I'm like, you know, this would be unbelievable. And um, so my phone rang and it was it was Coach T. And I just kind of like it's all that stuff you talked about from childhood. Everything like just hit me like a tr like I had everybody there. I had like 200 people, uh, my closest friends and family, like everyone says, man. But generally, everyone in that building had some help in getting me to where I was. So I wanted to make sure that everybody could come by. It was at Phil Vilpiano's restaurant. So that was that was sweet to have that kind of legacy there. Yeah. Um, it was special, man. I just I just started ball. I don't even know what he said. I remember, <laughs> I remember he said, hey, man, it's Mike T. And it was like done. I, was, I don't remember what he said. I was like, man, this better not be a prank call. It's definitely going to get <laughs> I'm definitely about to get drafted. So I, I lost it, man. It was it was incredibly special. Um, you know, I'll, I'll remember it forever, man. It was it was awesome. Does the hand size stuff get on your nerves? <laughs> because, like, you're too slow. I work out. I'm not accurate. I practice. Yep. Like, do you sit and look at your hands? Like, come on, <laughs> motherfuckers. Much, <laughs> <laughs> I stretched them out a little bit, man. I was doing some exercises. I got them up. I think it was like eight and a half at combine. I got them to like eight and five A's or something at pro day. So, like, for whatever that's worth, man, I was trying everything I could. You couldn't, I was sleeping in like, a splint to like stretch my hand out like dude, I'll do whatever whatever it takes man yeah. I'll do I'll do whatever um so yeah like it yeah. but like you said it's something you can't really control so at the end of the day I'm like I mean I'm just gonna go throw whatever I mean I played in the second coldest game in high school history against the Raiders and you know we won the two-minute drill so we did we did all right so um yeah that that it, it there's always something like they just once they find something in that draft process man they're gonna hammer it home till till the draft so uh, you just hear about all the negatives and not, not much of the positives. So if I could have any advice to the guys doing it, man, just just keep working and uh, it all works out. And, and with that, uh, KP, you um, even at Pitt, uh, Dan Marino, I'm sure he was plastered all over the place. Everywhere. Another big target for you to go after. You mentioned Bradshaw and Big Ben. The expectations are what they are. How do you yourself uh, manage those? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. I don't I don't try not to put too much thought in it. Like, you know, people are like, how are you going to you know, you're coming in for Big Ben? Like, obviously, it's a it's a Hall of Famer, man. Like, it's it's not going to happen in one season. It's not going to happen in two seasons. So, like, I know there's such a long ways to go where I'm just kind of focusing on, OK, like, I got to improve at X, Y, Z right now. I have no shot at being a, a good NFL quarterback. So um, I just focus on what I can do to get better, you know, how I can help us as a team. And, you know, hopefully at the end of it, I can look back and say, all right, I did some good things. So uh, I think just kind of being in the moment, focus on what I need to do. Right. And that uh, that brings us to where we are now. We're in Hollywood, not Hollywood, California, but Hollywood, Florida. Yep. And you guys are down here training you know, all over social media. It's yourself. It's, it's Mitch Trubisky in the receiving court, uh, Deontay. Pick, you know, all yep. those guys. Speak to uh, the level of commitment. You and your post rookie year now, first off season, and you guys are uh, uh, going to a location where you're all just here to get that work. Speak to the level of commitment by your group. Yeah, it's big, man. It's big. It's you. Love, you love hearing guys like anyone in the NFL could say, "Man, I want this. I want that." Like 
everyone should have like that want to like they can talk about it and it sounds great and everyone's on board and it's a rah-rah type thing but then if, when it's time to do it like who shows up and who's there like that's when you find out like who's really all in and who wants to do it so to have everyone show up man and be down here and, and ready to work it was it was it's awesome to see and you know it just kind of excites you as a, as a quarterback as a player that you got guys with you that are on that same kind of level and same kind of drive that want to go out there and win a championship so um it's awesome to see and who set it up because you weren't starting at first you can't tell nobody to come work out if you ain't starting yeah. Like, did you set up the workout? This one, this one yes. I did, yeah. Yeah, this one wow. I did, man. I'm, I'm the starter now, so yeah, yeah, yeah I did it I did it now. So, um, you know, put everybody in the group chat, and everyone was on board, and it's not hard, like you said, to get guys down to Florida, man. If I, was, if I was in Jersey, I think that's a little bit harder of a sell. Uh, so getting guys down here was cool. You know, uh, that brings me to a question. When he mentioned that Mitch, Mitchell was here, and obviously Chan talking about starting, we all have visions of what our career is going to be and when you finish as strong as you did at Pitt it's not about sitting and then obviously you know with getting Mitchell Trubisky in the offseason you guys were going to be competing and you had to wait you know you waited until October 2nd to be inserted against the New York Jets to get your opportunity what was that process like for you waiting your turn and i watched the preseason you showed in the preseason that you had the ability to go out and start but the pittsburgh steelers still wanted to go through the process in the way that they did how difficult was it for you to sit and just wait for your turn yeah i mean as competitors you know you guys you want to play man you you, you don't want to go out there run out of the tunnel and then sit in the sideline with your helmet so um, but listen, I trust Mike T wholeheartedly, man. So he he has a plan. I knew he had a plan for me, and whatever you know, whatever it was, I'm like I'm all in on on it, and whatever he wants me to do, I'm doing. So um, I was able to get into a good rhythm and a routine of like film study and preparation, and kind of learn how to do that as a pro coming out of college, um, having class. Which my senior year, I don't think I went to too many classes to be honest. <laughs> it was uh, I was majoring in football, but like I kind of had like you know Coach T there to guide me early on and what that process looks like and we kind of really refined it so when the point where I came to starter it was just another week for me in terms of preparation because I was doing that like I was preparing like the starter just not getting the practice reps and then once I got that got my feet under me a little bit I felt you know a lot better so the first start is against the Bills it was horrific yep right so Minka me and Minka text a lot and I was texting with him about something and he sends me a quote and the quote is it's a picture of you and the quote was, the only dude I'd take in the alley with me from the Pittsburgh Steelers was the quarterback, right? And I was talking about you. Mink probably didn't like that, bro. Not, <laughs> but the thing was this. Before I said it, I said, now, we all know about Cam and Mika, and TJ wasn't playing at the time. Yeah. So I got them out the way first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But him, bases, yeah, and he yeah. even told me, that he was like, yeah, I just used it for motivation. Yeah. But that week is your first week starting the games going terribly. And you're fighting, though, and I'm watching, which is why I said – what I said, but a funny thing from that game is DeMar hits you late, Yeah. right? DeMar Hamlin hits you late on the sideline. You had, a, yeah, at least you had one lineman, yeah. you know, oh, come yeah, over yeah, to yeah. the fight. JD came over. <laughs> For you, man, when you're in that game and it's going bad like that, and obviously we don't know what's going to happen with DeMar later on in the season, and you're in that moment and your homeboy for school hits you, what are you thinking to yourself? Like, he's like, should I, should I steal on him? Or like, do quarterbacks do that? You know, are my hands worth enough to not hit him? You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Um, so I slid and he hit me late. And I just got out. I was like, come on, man. Because I've, I've known DeMar for so long. We've been going at it for a long time, man. Practices, you name We talk we, every day in practice. We would go at it. Uh, you know, Paris Ford. He was yep. enough. We would go every day, man. Love him to death. But every day, we go. it's good, you know, competing. So I get up, he's like, man, I was, I was worried about the fake slide. I was like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I was like, come on, bro. I was like, what a, whatever, man. But it was, it's good, man. Because, like, you know, Dane Jackson's on that team, too. Yep. He was on, we were on the same locker row together at Pitt, man. And, uh, you know, they whooped our ass for sure. But, you know, just, just competing, man, trying to win and pissed off being down that much. So right. just kind of the emotions get to you a little bit. The fake slide, bro, where would that come from now? I honestly swear to God. It was just in the moment thing. I never practiced it, swear, swear. They pulled up 10 yards away, and I'm like, oh, I got a lot of room to run. Like, I thought I hit a stutter step, and I was out. 
But when I watched it on tape, I'm like, yeah, that's a fake slide. So <laughs> I, I dragged my foot and everything. But a lot of people were upset. You guys are defensive guys, so I'm oh, sure goodness. you guys are on TV bashing me. Yeah, but I was, just, I, I was like, yeah, man, well, it's in the rule book now. So now it's gone. So now no one could, Vix was way cooler than me, though. His should have been banned along. Remember when he did that spin move with yep. the one hand? Yeah. That was that. That was way cooler than mine. So <laughs> he has it for sure. And you bring up that first game, and we were all watching. You were talking about games. We watched all your games, yeah. and especially – with this Pittsburgh lover here. Oh, he yeah. talks about it every damn show. They but, get upset because they don't win a lot. Yeah, happens. Hey, man, you know what? We won with Marino. <laughs> That's how long ago before the Dolphins were damn, we know worth a damn. But um, but was there any, was that was that a humbling moment? Because like I was talking about earlier where yeah. you go to, you're a baller in high school, then you get to college. Bro, you won it all. ACC player of the year, athlete of the year. Got that Johnny Unitas Award, All American, like every record. He got every pit record, <laughs> every record you can, and broke the Dan Marino stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's rolling, and then you get to Pittsburgh, and you're not starting. Then you start, and y'all start getting y'all damn asses beat. Yeah. <laughs> like, was it then? When was that humbling moment? Or was there was there a humbling moment? You know, I feel like I'm a I'm a humble guy, but when I once you cross the line, like you have that. You know that you're the man and that you can't get touched out like you know you just have that feeling of you're doing this your whole life you worked hard to be here like you just feel like you can't get touched and, and like of course man like you're playing against the best in the world like at, when i started practicing against minka against tj against cam you're like you know these guys can play you know it's a humbling once once you get up here and you see how good everyone is man you can't have an off day you know you got to be on on your shit every single day or you're gonna get you're gonna get beat so you know i definitely came in i feel like with a humble attitude man but you know it definitely gets checked when you get blown out like that and um it's not a good feeling so i felt like once we hit the bye week man like we came together and like it could go yeah. two ways like we could this thing could tank and we'd be two and whatever and finish or yeah. you know we could push for the playoffs and have a shot and we ended up having a shot that last week and didn't go our way, but it was cool to see, you know, the way we finished, the way we came together as a team. The, uh, the AFC loaded with great young talent. What, what is it going to take for you in that next step, that big leap for you to be mentioned with the likes of, you know, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen? Uh, yeah, look at his division. In his, yeah, yeah, in his division, yeah, he yeah, has yeah, Joe Burrow. Century, right, right. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, what, what, that next step, what is it going to take for you to get there? That's a great question, man. I think I, I look back at my experience at Pitt. I think that what what took me to the next level, um, it's just you go back to football being like that ultimate team game, man. There's we we had a lot of talent at Pitt, and it came together that last year where you know that work ethic matched the talent we had, and you know I think we're kind of heading that way, you know, with the Steelers. Um, I think there's a lot of talent on our team, and you know as long as I continue to work and um, you know push myself in the off season to make that leap and, and master our system and kind of own it the way you see these other quarterbacks in the league own it. And the guys have been playing the same system for a couple of years now. You know, they're running the show out there, and that's kind of what I want to get to. Um, it doesn't happen overnight, and, you know, I understand that. It's going to take some time to get there, but, you know, I'm going to do everything in my power to get there. And I know that we have the guys on, on the team that, that want that same goal of, you know, ho hoisting that trophy up in February. So, um, you know, I know we'll get there sooner or later. You know, in Pittsburgh, that's all it's about. Um, small goals are not recognized there. Right. Uh, which is evident by playing for a coach who's never had a losing season, season in over a decade and a half, and people want him fired. For, for you to, you know, become the starter when you did against the Jets and for the season to not be going as well as it was, obviously it starts to be, is this going to be Coach Tomlin's first losing season? And coming into the year, you had the quarterback controversy. You started to right the ship. The defense was playing well. Najee starts to pick up. The offensive line starts to play a little better. And you alluded to this game earlier. It was kind of my, okay, KP got it game. You're playing the Raiders. It's freezing. You know, and I've played in some cold games. That yeah, would look cold, cold on TV, bro. Cold, cold. Yeah, my homeboy coaches for the Raiders. He said he was ready to go the moment he stepped off the plane. Yep. Uh, to finish that game, though, you have a, a big drive. Uh, I think you hit George Pickens yep. for the touchdown to win the game. And, you know, we're going to hear a lot about Pickett to Pickens, and I want to ask you about that later. Was that kind of a moment for you followed up by a week of doing the same thing and beating the Ravens late in the game where you said, you know what? I might, I might be able to do this, and as a team, we might be able to do something. Yeah, I think those, those big-time moments when guys step up around you, 
Um, and you kind of you're getting comfortable in those. You know, in the NFL, I feel like all those games, like, a lot of them just come down to one possession, man. Like it's not college where you're beating teams by 21 or or you know 14 points. Like, it's coming down to that two minute, either offensively or defensively, uh, majority of the time. So we worked. You know, Coach T. You know, saw that we're a young team. We worked that drill, man, a lot. And I wasn't successful at first. Like I had a lot of adversities. Um, early on in the two minutes, just come from college and the clock stoppages and um, not having that after first downs. And you don't realize how fast that clock goes, man, when you keep it in bounds. And um, the game just is a little bit different at the NFL level when it comes to that. So once I felt like I had a good feel for it and you're showing up in big time moments and you're doing it and you're having success and that, that, that route that George ran, like he converted it, you know, he saw the right coverage, he read it and, and did it and we, we've worked it. So um, like you're starting to see things that you've practiced over and over again, like come into the game and now you're having success in the game. Like you're just seeing the trend go up. Um, so that's why I was really hoping, man, we get in the playoffs and have another shot just because of the way we were playing. Like we were, we, were, we were coming along, like we were doing what we were setting out to do. Um, so, you know, that, that's definitely those two moments of, you know, winning games, big time moments. It's kind of you're like, OK, you know, we, we have a shot. How good did it feel, though, to do that to the Ravens? Like, I think people it's, it's hard to find an actual rivalry in the NFL. It just is. Even if you play a team all the time because you don't beat each other enough or it's not physical enough, that one is. And that's yeah, that something that, that I was a, a part of. And I tell people all the time, you always look to see who you play the next week because you know how much you're gonna, it's going to take to win that game. Right. When you do win that game against the Ravens, what's that feeling like in the locker room for you being the starting quarterback in that moment? Yeah, it's huge, man. Especially because I got knocked out so early in the first one. Um, you know, I was hyped up for that one, and I didn't, you know, I think it was the first series, second series was out. Um, so then when I came back for this one on the road, like, it just, it means a little bit more, too, to win on the road. Like, you know, going into a hostile environment like that, that was probably my favorite atmosphere that I played in, you know, my, my rookie season, uh, being a rivalry game, being late, late in the year. Um, but like you said, bro, the, the pads pop a little differently, I think, in the Steelers versus Ravens, yes, man. Like, that, that game's a little bit different. When I hand that ball to Naj and I kind of turn, I hear what's popping in between the tackles. I'm like, might want to stay away from there for this, <laughs> for this game. I'll stay on the outside. But, um, yeah, man, it's, it's physical. Um, it's an incredible rivalry I watched with Ed Reed and, I mean, yourself, were, you were in it, and Ben, and uh, growing up, like, you just, all those memories of those games is, is cool. So, it was awesome. And what's the biggest difference? Because it's funny you talk about it. We love talking ball, too. But when I got to the league as a linebacker, I just saw how damn athletic the offensive linemen were. Yeah. Like, he's 350, and I do a little stutter step, and he laughs at me and does the same move. Yeah. You spoke about the DBs, the jumps, the, yep. the schemes, the hits. Like, what was, what was the moment that you said, damn, that's different in college? Quentin Williams laying me out that first game. That, that, that was one of the hits that I was like, okay. Like, I got up laughing, but inside, like, you know when you're hurt, but you're like, I can't, I can't show it. So yeah. you, you get up smiling, but, like, you're like, damn, all right, he got me on that one. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think the front, man, the edge rushers, those guys are different. Like, TJ's different. Yes. Cam, Cam's massive. He's different. And, like, schematically how that has to tie into your game plan, that changes a lot of things, too. So I think edge rushers for sure are something that – that, that kind of was like, ah, oh, this is different. And the, uh, the North, RC talked about the North, the competition level in the North, talk about rivalries and, you know, each and every week for the Steelers. Like I made the Steelers my rivalry. You know, we were in different divisions after yeah. a while, but uh, college in Pittsburgh, now pro in Pittsburgh, you know, what, what's your ticket request count like on a weekly <laughs> for home games? I'm a Jersey guy, so I'm Jersey first, Pittsburgh second for sure. <laughs> but um, because that's a five and a half hour drive, man, my yeah. parents got the got a like a mini, like a big van that fits like 20 people in it. So I had to get a suite for all my family and friends. So that's like <laughs> 16 or 18 tickets there a week, plus like the two you get. And then if I have to get some more, I'll get some more. But wow. it's they we, we travel deep for the for the home games. For, but like I said, like it's all the people that are on my draft night, you know, that are like old high school coaches, old teammates, like guys that I played with in high school. Like, hey, man, I really want to come out. And of right. course, like, you know, it's just it's great to have it close to home where I could see everybody and kind of enjoy this journey with, with everyone I came up with. KP, Chan works in Miami media. This is where we are now as well. And so he had to watch everything happen with Tua throughout the season. You mentioned being knocked out of the first Ravens game. I think it was Roquan mm -hmm. um, gets in on you. Your head hits the ground. Uh, 
I want to say there was another incident you had of being in protocol. For you, with the game being more physical, you talking about the way a Quinnen Williams can get to you. Can, you don't run away from those guys for 58 yards with the fake slide in the league like you were able to do right. against a, a Wake Forest. For you, in trying to protect yourself, how concerned are you about maybe adjusting style of play so you don't miss that time being as valuable as you are to the team, as we saw to or even you in concussion protocol this year? Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. With my concussions, it was hit the back of my head hitting the ground. So it's tough as a quarterback. Like I, I'm going back to like how I trained in college. Like I used to train my neck a lot more than I did when I was getting ready for the draft because you're like, all right, I got to focus on these drills. I got to run this. And like I didn't train my neck as hard as I should have in the uh, like, I think coming up into the season. So I don't. I think you know, my neck strength, so I could hold my head up and not hit the ground, yeah. is something that I want to focus on. Um, but in terms of style of play, like I think I get down, like I could slide. I kind of, you know, you know how to get hit without taking the brunt of the hit, and like just those those kind of things. Just being a football player, like I think you can always improve improve at. But sometimes, like you just got to stand in the pocket and take a hit. It just comes with the job. So yeah. um, just doing stuff training wise to kind of help myself is something I'm going to focus on. So my son plays DB at Arizona State. Awesome. And I think it's always I always like to talk to other players whose fathers played football because I bro. Some of the rides me and my son had driving home from some of his high school games, I know, like, in his little heart, because at the time he was, like, 150, he was like, man, if I could whip dad, I'd put hands <laughs> on him. Like, straight up. And I've gotten better because now I could see in him all the things I wanted him to be as the way I wanted him to care. He does. So I don't have to force that upon right. him. Your pops coached you in flag all the way to high school. You've even said, you know, he talks, okay, did you see Tom do this and all those yep. things. Now that you are a pro and you have a real relationship with your father, it's not like, oh, it's all about Kenny Pickett, the pro. He's always been there. What are those post-game talks like now? A lot different than when I was growing up than <laughs> Pee Wee, man. I was driving home, and I had plenty of the same kind of. But that's, I think, that's where I, that's why your son where is it where he's at. Like, I think I'm where I'm at because my dad was just like he knew how bad I wanted it to to be where I was. Like he saw that I had the drive, so he's like, listen, if that's where you want to go, like this is what you have to do. And he was very, you know, very honest about it. You know, would pay for any camps, would do anything to help me get there. Um, like was a coach and like best friend, but you know now that you're in the NFL, it's kind of, it's just a different ball game. You know he's being dad more than being like a coach. You know so I think like that switch got like flipped probably like college, like middle college, freshman year of college to where he's like okay, he's dealing with he's got so many coaches, he's got so many people that are trying to get him right on football. Like I need to be you know his dad right. now and make sure he's right as a person and and just kind of be like a sounding board for me you know after games and everything. But everyone like he's a defensive guy. He watches our defense. And he's just like, you know, you know, so-and-so made this play. Like, I saw this, I saw that. So he's still very in tune to what's going on football-wise and um, but still being dad at the same time. What about off the field? Like, do your parents, because they're, they're very involved, obviously. Yeah. Like, yeah. off the field, like, I want to buy this car. You ain't getting that car, Kenny. Okay, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, because it's a big transition. It, from it, it is a it is a big transition, and um, like I have a, a really good financial advisor, and he monitors everything. And uh, my fiance works in finance, so she monitors. I have a lot of people watching the finances, man. <laughs> so um, there's nothing that I really done that's been like crazy yet. That that they were like, "What are you doing?" So I think I'm doing a good job so far. Yeah, but I got a lot of people, you know, making sure I'm doing the right thing. But. Th I had to have the I'm a grown man conversation with my people <laughs> at some point. Have you had yeah. that or do you think you have to have that? No, I mean, I think they I think they've done a really good job of keeping an arm's distance and letting me grow up and let me be, you know, my own person. But at the same time, like if I need guidance, I'm like, hey, I, I'm looking at this house or I'm looking at this like I don't know what I'm looking at. I'm just, you know, my fiance, my mom and dad, they went looking for for a house while I was in rookie minicamp and we had a number set. And I'm like, OK, that's a good number to be at. Like, we probably won't go over that. Um, I get done with rookie mini camp. They're like, hey, we got a house. Like, we love it. I'm like, okay, like, I got another day. Like, I got another day here. Like, can I wait and see it? They're like, no, you know, we got to get it now. Turn out being twice the number that I had set. <laughs> so they actually had the craziest purchase than I, than I had. But, so I bought a house, signed the papers and everything, and I didn't even see it. So that's how much trust I have with my fiance and my parents. But after I saw it, I'm like, they did, they did a really good job. So I got no clue what I'm looking at in that area. But yes, yeah, so that, that was my first big time purchase that was crazy and I didn't even really make it. So that was it.
Did y'all have a, a rookie dinner this year? We did, and it, luckily I'm in a small position group, man. <laughs> I had I had the three Qs. I had um, DC, our, our uh, like support staff guy, you know, helping us out, and uh, Coach Sully. Um, so we had a small group. It probably racked up toward like three, three grand, and that, that was it. So I got out easy. I think the O line. The I've heard some horror stories for the D line. I've heard <laughs> DBs, you know, gets a little wild. So I got I got lucky. The receiver is typically the wild pack. They're the wild group. That is true. And since you guys are down here in beautiful Miami training, there's a little establishment down the road. Yeah. <laughs> that if you want to celebrate with them. <laughs> you probably heard it in Drake's song, uh, Upstairs at Tussie Getting Shoulder Up. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so if you happen to want to do something nice for your guys, about 15, 15 minutes. 15 up, the, up yeah, the road. Take care of it. Hey. I'll, let, I'll let the boys know. His fiance is on the balcony. Yeah, yeah it's for the boys. It's for the boys. <laughs> for the boys. He's the leader. He's giving oh, back. Man. Right. Oh, wow. He's just Nobody. giving back to That's the it. Let it. somebody go to Tissy's without you? Hey, man. I don't even know that concept. <laughs> you know, he, he can be the designated driver. <laughs> there you go. Speaking, there you go. speaking of your, your guys, so many quarterbacks are tied to a receiver. Obviously, it's the total receiver group, but as great as Joe Burrow has been and the, the skill group he has, it's Jamar Chase. And, you know, you hear the same thing as Stafford, but it's Cooper Cup and all those different things. For you, you kind of had the the fortunate happenstance of coming in with George Pickens, who you know, I know, everybody in the world knows should have been a first round pick. He's a first round talent. Do you ever, or how much do you sit around and think, man, we could do some great things here. We can have that big Ben Roethlisberger, Antonio Brown sort of run here. Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, like you said, he's shown how athletically gifted he is but I think what I saw today just kind of working his routes like he wants to become a route runner and he wants to have all those routes in his arsenal where it's just, it's not just one or two routes where guys really have to worry about so I think when he once we put that together in this spring man along with Deontay on the other side and Pat working in the middle of the field um, Najee in the backfield like like you said I mean there's a lot of pieces that are young that we could really build around so um but like i said before man it sounds good on paper you know <laughs> talking about it sounds awesome we got to go out there and do it um but i'm i'm really you know encouraged what i've seen early on from from everyone i don't know how this happens this early you have your own field back at the crib right kenny pickett field and if you go to the field there's what yeah he had his own field he just got to the league. <laughs> the, didn't the, the man run won the award that says you gonna get to the league? I they heard only you. they Steve o- Pilipompo. <laughs> <name was. laughs> they named the field of you already. Yeah, yeah. Not the high school field, like a field that I grew up playing Papa Winter at. That was the that was the field that got named after me. Damn. And it says and your and your quote is one day I want to say I made it. Yep. Do you feel like you've made it though? Um. I think it changes. I think it like like when I got drafted, I was like that was the first thing, and when I posted on my Instagram. I want to say like 2014, like back when I was like a freshman or in eighth grade. Um, that was the moment that I had in my head of that, you know, saying I made it. And then as soon as I got drafted, there's one of me holding the trophy. That that's the next image in my head of saying I made it. So um, I think a, cha- a championship on that stage with everyone that I worked to get there with, like then I'll say I made it, and then it'll be doing it again. So that's the next stage. What's the last image? I'm assuming it's the Lombardi. Yep. What's the last image? What is what is of my football what is, career? Football. What is Kenny the third, the <laughs> next Kenny talking about with his daddy? Um, that's a that's a great question, man. I haven't gotten that far. It's got to be put on the jacket, right? I mean, mm. that's that's. I think as a as a player, just talking individually, I think that's just a goal that um, you know it's special, and there's only a select few and. Um, I've, you know, blessed to meet a couple of them and they just talk about that moment and it's tough to, for them to even put into words of, um, but they always talk about the teams that they were on. Like, that's how special I think this game is and the relationships you build. Um, like I said, like I was holding a, tra- uh, holding a trophy at Pitt with all my best friends that I played college ball with. And now that I'm in the pros, man, I want to be holding a trophy up with some new group of guys that, you know, became best friends and, uh, you know, accomplished all the goals we set out to. So, but, you know, personally, individually, I think you can't be the gold jacket. Now, we love football on this show, right? This is three football guys, but we also love real life. Yep. And I'm surprised Channing didn't ask this question because this is a very Channing-like question. 
You you think he's you said he was a good looking guy. You, you good put looking. you put him in your tier. Yeah. I'm a good looking. I'm a tier down. You remember that? I'm, yeah. I'm a step below. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Everybody thinks I'm a trash. <laughs> the whole world. <laughs> you know, and and you're you're a very young man, even though, you know, you got that extra year of college, you know, you're going into your second year, and you keep mentioning your fiance and the things and the trust that you have in her and how she's doing things with your parents. Just to have that sort of relationship is big for a young player. Because yeah. a lot of times it's the parents pulling at the young player like, nah, it's time for you to do for me. So the fact that they can have that sort of relationship that supports you and says, Kenny, go play quarterback. Yeah. Right. But for you, what was that decision like, man, to to pop the question and, and say, you know, this is what I want to do. You are who I want to be with for the rest of my life. Yeah, man, it was it was awesome. So it was almost I think it was January 22nd. We're getting married uh, June 24th. So we're working kind of kind of quick. But uh, it's just kind of that cliche. Like when you know, you know, like I just had no doubt um, that she's someone I want to spend the rest of my life with just you know, personally, like how we connect on a personal level, like she works in private equity. I think she has longer hours than I did, like during the season, like she's out of the house at eight, back at eight o'clock at night. She's out there working right now. So like, we just kind of connected on that level. And then I think it took off from there. Like her, her family's awesome. Her family's in Naples uh, right now. My parents are working in a house in Marco Island. So like they're 30 minutes away. We grew up 15 minutes away, um, you know, met on a, on a college break. She went to Princeton, you know, I was at Pitt. We ended up training at the same place growing up, so she was. Uh, shout out to Val Barnaby, my guy Val. Uh, that's that's kind of where we met, like when we were like 10 years old. Never took, never spoke to each other. We're just in the same building. Always had a crush on her, but never said anything. And then when I saw her on a college break, I was like, okay, I think it's time that I say something now. So um, I'm really glad I did, and uh, now we're here, man. And I can't say enough great things about Amy and what she means to me. Well, what, what did you say? I got to know the line now. You've been chasing him for 10, 15 like good, years. He was like Goodwill Hunting in that day on that one. You yeah. were stalking her for 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we were playing uh, either beer pong or something, and I was like, I need a partner. So I was like, hey, come be my partner. And then it took, it took off from there, man. That, so we were just uh, we were winning some games and uh, had a little connection there, and then it took off. Okay, so is it steak and fish on the, on the list? What do I have to choose from at the wedding? That's a good question. We have, we're gonna pick that out. I'm I want steak. I'm a steak. You guy. want steak? So, yeah. So we, all right. Yeah. Like, and don't why, put me at table 19. I want to be at table three. But Chad, why would he want you there? He needs to be the most stunning man you're, at the, you're gonna take at my the wedding. Shine. I won't mess up your wedding. I won't mess up your wedding. Even more than that, he's inviting himself. So the real question is, how do you come up with your guest list? Oh, uh, that, that was a, a lot of people, a lot of people, man. Like you said, the draft night and everything and, and um, you know, family, friends and stuff. I think we're at like 270. And I think we're going to cap like we're done at 270. Because you got pro friends now, too, pro, though. Pro, pro friends, man, college friends, high school friends, like football. I'm blessed to play football. I, all my best friends have came pretty much from football. Yeah. Like, that's just kind of how it goes. Um, so you have these relationships you're like, man, like I wish I, I really want him there. I really want him there. But. Amy's like, listen, we're at like 400 people like when we started. So like that was way over the, over the limit. But um, everyone's been really cool about it. So it's been good. So this is my last, my last relationship question. And then I'll let Freddie ask the question that always wraps the show. Um, you know, one, women are just generally smarter than we are. They just, they just are, right? And they're better debaters and arguers. Bro, your girl went to Ivy League school, yeah. though. So when y'all get into like a little heated conversation does she ever bring up how she's so much more highly educated than you um i think it just comes out naturally in the <laughs> conversation like you hear me talk and i hear her side i'm like damn like you know like you're just like it's not even close but um i think she's got the book smarts for sure uh the street smart like the common sense i may have i may have her edged out her parents can verify that for me as well <laughs> um so yeah i think there's a really good give and take on both sides we usually rap with asking the guests, what's your biggest pivot in life? Hence the, the name of the show, The Pivot. Uh, but for you, you're such a young man, and uh, you got so much life ahead of you, a lot of messing up to do, we've all been there, and a lot of figuring that part out. So I won't ask you that, but I will ask you, you know, considering it seems that you've had just this amazing, you know, uh, uh, route, you know, uh, journey to the NFL. It just seems that it's been picture perfect almost. And, and so surreal. But I want to ask you, uh, you know, uh, having an opportunity to have a, a field named after you, and you have so many young, 
young uh, youth football players mm -hmm. that are looking up to you. Have you, for a minute, taken a step back to say, man, I can be that damn Marino, you know, that, to give these kids something to go after, or that Big Ben, or the Terry Bradshaw. Have you taken that moment to say, man, I can be next, the one that these kids are looking up to? I think, I mean, for sure, and it's not, you know, I feel like I'm in a position now where I feel like a lot of kids are looking up to me, at least in my hometown, you know, for sure. And I would just kind of want to set that example of, you know, I was never the biggest kid like we talked about. Like, I played three sports. I think it's, you know, I think some kids are just like playing one sport now and focusing on it. Like, just go be a kid, man. And then when you find out what you want to do in high school and stuff, just go chase after it and, uh, you know, work hard and you can achieve anything. You know, there's so many naysayers out there, there's so many negative people on this planet. Um, you know, stick stick close to the positive ones and you can reach, you know, the dreams that you have set for yourself. So, um, you know, I hope I've set that and I'm going to continue to do that. And like you said, hopefully, you know, land somewhere around those names that you mentioned. And, uh, you know, I think I you know, had a pretty good run. Man, listen, we appreciate your time, uh, especially fitting us in. I know you've been working. You got to take the boys out. Uh, also, we thank your fiance for giving us pop uh, yeah, this, this pop space in. as well. You know, for me, man, I'm a fan, but more than being a fan, I'm rooting for you. I want every Monday morning when I'm on TV to get on there and talk about how KP and the Steelers ball, you know, what you get to do in that place is special, though. Uh, Chan and Fred met Mike T. They've been around what we have as an organization, the way the older players and the guys who are alums still go back. And you got to watch it being in college. All I could say, man, is never take for granted what the people before you did and what it's going to mean for the people after you, what you do. Because it is extremely important. We're a family, man. So I wish you the best. We appreciate you, brother. Thank Cheers. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that, man. Yes, appreciate it. Appreciate that. Tell Mike T I love him. <laughs> no. Hey, <laughs> well, dude, he was fell in love with Mike well, T. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cap, pin in it. I fought the head to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling got me up. Uh, on the mission got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, only vision I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Niggas send me cap pin in it. I fought the head to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling got me up. Uh, on the mission got me up.